Hello, I'm Chris Cleverton and I'm sitting here with Bonnie Dittrich and Betty Lehan and today we are interviewing Thelma Ravinsky at the cable television studio and we selected this because Thelma Ravinsky is very involved with the Historical Commission and she does a lot of uh, videoing about the history of Norfolk so we, that is why we decided to have you sit here. So we're going to start with asking you when did you come to Norfolk and what brought you to Norfolk? I was married in 1950 and that's the year I came. So it's been 60 years. Yeah. 60 years yeah. you've lived here. Mm -hmm. And was your husband originally from? He was born in Norfolk. And did they have a farm or what? what uh, they had a farm. There were 12 children and uh, when we were married decided to give each of the boys land. Uh, two of them weren't able to have land on the property. There was about six acres. And so um, all the boys, uh, the four of the boys, five of the boys were able to live on the property. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. And so you were born in? I was born in Norwood. Norwood. Yeah, and I attended the Bosch School uh, when I moved to Rock Hill, that's near East Orville, and would walk to school um, a little more than a mile. And uh, that was called the Flats. And that was an experience of uh, going to school there. It was a wonderful time because when walking, you could get wildflowers, jack in the pulpits, <laughs> wild geraniums. All these things, um, I got a red hand uh, because I tattled on two people that climbed up in the apple trees and destroyed the ne bird's nests, and because I told that they did it. In those days, you just didn't say those things mm -hmm. about people. <laughs> so then when you came here, um, you were married so that the, you... I was married, and my first lived on Seacock Street. and. My first child was born there. She was born uh, about 11 months after I was married. And uh, then uh, I moved to Medway Street and lived with my brother and sister-in-law while a house was, my husband was building a house. How many children do you have? I have three children. Three children? Two girls and boy. And can you tell us a little bit about them? Well, my oldest daughter, she works at the Cooperative Bank, and the next daughter is a school teacher here at the Freeman Center in the school for well, 36 years, I guess. Yeah. Yes. And my son right now is uh, a graduate of the prison. I think both my children had your daughter. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody can say that. Yeah. Somebody at yeah. least in Norfolk, and it definitely identifies with that. And she was a wonderful teacher, by the way. Uh, <laughs> tell us about what Norfolk was like. Norfolk, when, when, when I came here, came it was here. probably around 3,000 people, and that's not including the prisoners. And, uh, and of course, it was very rural. Um, and, uh, well, of course, you walk. There was a bus service, though, come from Walpole up to mm -hmm. Franklin, because I remember walking down the road together. And, uh, Town meetings were a riot. We had the town clerk at the time was George Campbell, and his brother was a character. And we used to have our town meetings at the McBride Auditorium, the McBride Auditorium. And this gentleman would get up with his cane, and he was a rabble rouser. But um, there were other interesting characters along the way that we probably heard about. Mm -hmm. Especially Morris Black, who had to be escorted out of one of our town meetings because uh, he disrupted the meeting and he was, well, unfortunately, he was murdered down in Texas. And if anybody wanted to read that story, you can, you can Google it because uh, he was a man that gave Frank Rose a very bad time. And Frank, I'm interviewing him. Um, he, describes this Morris Black. So this was um, when Frank was the... He was moderator. Moderator at the time. Yes, yes, moderator at the time. 
Mm -hmm. I have interviewed uh, people for uh, a book, the book that we put out in 1996 on uh, Norfolk stories. Mm -hmm. The only person living now is Jim Foley, who had the farm over on Park Street. Fascinating. But I have done more interviews, which we are transcribing now. Oh, wow. So hopefully there will be another book out. Wonderful. Oh, that would be wonderful. wonderful. They all people that were instrumental in doing something within the town. Yes. Or you just yes. No people that have lived here a while, um, and uh, <coughs> people that uh, I feel are interesting yeah. as as Frank Gross mm -hmm. and uh, well uh, Pauline Valente mm -hmm. who grew up here in town. And people that could tell you stories about what the town was like mm -hmm. way back when. Mm -hmm. So did, now, where might they find the copy of this book? That, um, the Norfolk Stories on the Historical Commission. Uh, oh, okay. I usually carry them in my car in case somebody stops me and asks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the other book, of course, is to come out. Right. Yeah. When do you think it will be finished? I mean? Oh, I don't know. It took me 10 years for the first time. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I have no idea. I just, it's a lot of work. Yes. Yeah. Well, the, I would say that this historical commission is is very active, and 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 does an awful wonderful things for well, the I'll, town. Well, I'll tell you, when I was assistant town clerk, because I worked at this assistant town clerk and did tax collecting too. Or Ellen Pearson was the town clerk at the time, and they wanted me to be on the bylaws committee, and. Um, I got to my desk in the morning and I saw this paper that said I was sworn in on the bylaws. And I said, I was never sworn in. I don't want to belong to that. Frank Gross wanted me to be on it. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm going to be on the Historical Commission. And I was told it was a do-nothing commission. And I said, well, I'm going to do something. And I think over the years, it's we've improved and we've done quite a bit. Yeah. And we, and we have a wonderful yeah. researcher. Oh, yeah. I love about Dolly. She, she really digs up a lot of things, right. and she's very knowledgeable. So we're now, very fortunate. What year around was that, Thelma? That um, I became assistant in 1977. Okay. And the building in this town didn't start till about 1980. That's when we had the boom. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I say, there was only around 3,000 people, and it certainly increased to. I believe over 10,000 people yeah. now. Yeah. So, um, and how long, so you were the assistant town clerk? Yes. And how long did you hold that position? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I had so many jobs, uh, but that was one thing I did, and I, uh, I was on many, uh, I think the first committee I ever was on was the memorial committee uh, for the Korean uh, uh, memorial we have up. I know when it came to 1995, when we wanted to re-sculpture the town hill, uh, Donna Shar and I went before the Legion, and we told them what we were going to do, and they said we had, we weren't, and we weren't going to touch those memorials because they were on consecrated ground. Mm -hmm. We better not do anything and not t touch the gazebo. They were going to run us out of town. So, so we. <laughs> We had quite a trial, you know, trying to do what, to fix the town hill because ADA said, you've got to comply with us, you know, and that's mm -hmm. when it happened, that we everything had to be done for uh, the people that couldn't uh, be able to walk up on the town hill. At that time, you know, it, it was steps right. and, uh, and, and a wall. In 1970, there was no wall around. You could go right down the hill to the street, but uh, you know the changes in this town, and uh, even more today. Mm -hmm. they, how did you resolve that? Did you leave the monuments where they were? Oh uh, yes, Le the monuments <coughs> were where they were, and we happened to have water underground because there used to be a town pump there, and I myself had to get water there because when Ted Weaver was uh, was the uh, water. Commissioner, and the, they didn't realize that I was living in a house that uh, on the side Borman Street that had water. There were two houses, and they shut us off because they were working on Borman Street. So we had to go to that pump 
and I had we had babies and it was tough. It was, yeah. Kinda, yeah. It was right there across from the Federated Church, the pump. Was that where it was located right there? Yes. Yes, yeah, yes so on the hill. It is now up on, up on the hill near the tramp house. So the the the, uh, the old pump is there. It's not working of course, uh -huh. it's just the pump. But that's where it is. So so maybe that's why the water up there was spring water. Yes, so we yeah, were able to use, the town we had Wiley come, yeah, mm -hmm. and we were able to use the water there. And when we planted the trees there, it was, uh, we took the water, I guess, from uh, the library. I used to help uh, to water those trees mm -hmm. that we had planted there because it was a very dry season. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, we were able to, uh, I think it, it, it's beautiful. I think, I it think it's and beautiful. And you know one Wonderful. thing? Nancy Seitz was our chairman. She was mm -hmm. wonderful, and we met with every committee. We just didn't do things by ourselves. We had the input of everyone there, mm -hmm. and that's a fine. I think I think people really enjoy it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as far as the tramp house is concerned, well, that was to be moved, and George Murray, who donated the flag, the Norfolk flag, to the Hall of Flags in the State House, uh, I went before him and. Uh, asked him if they would save the tram house because they were going to get rid of it. And I said, well, the Medfield has the peak house and then we had, this is the only town room, little building we have. And they said, well, they didn't think they could take care of it, have the upkeep of it, they would get rid of it. It was put up in rollers. Mm -hmm. And my son-in-law, who was on the police force, watched it one night so it wouldn't fall off and, um, or had be vandalized. And the next day I saw George and he said, we decided after he talked to you to keep it. And so Marilyn Morris, the executive secretary at the time, said, we're going to name it Thelma's Tramp. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But, but well, it's still it's, there. It's, and it, it, it's, it's to the, the, well, the town. Well, uh, not only itself. that, the electrical, for the, for the light center is located in the back of it. They put a false door oh. there. And that's where all the Oh, I didn't even know that. That's something new. Very nice. Well, can, do, you have seen then a lot of changes to the downtown, what we call the downtown. Uh -huh. yeah. And and you can also relate to us or tell us a little bit about the when you came here that the St. Jude's was not here, but that it was. No, uh, of course they met in, at the Grange. And the interesting thing is they also had voting there. And in one of the DVDs that I was able to put on uh, this local television, show the inside when they were voting with one ballot box. Mm. Oh my God! And St. <laughs> St. Jude's had, of course, their uh, mass there. Mm -hmm. Father Bailey was the first priest, and uh, then, of course, they bought the corner property, which is now country the country um, crossing. There was a, a house there and a store, a man's store. They bought it, and the man's store was turned into a chapel. Mm -hmm. And my husband and his brothers built a lot of the pews that were there. Mm -hmm. And we, that's where we held. Yeah, and and it was so small. And you wouldn't believe, because then they decided to build the church, which I guess um, Maisie Phelan had a lot to do with. They bought the land, and uh, Now, I have a question of some, and some of the other interviewers uh, when they talk about the man's store. Why wasn't the man's store preserved like the tramp house well, was? Why didn't they say Unfortunately, that? unbeknownst to us, when the archdiocese bought it, and it was really um, in poor condition, mm -hmm. because I can remember going there to take instruction, and if it was snowing, the snow would come right in dining room. Oh, area. Yeah. Mm. And it was an old building, but uh, the historic commission didn't have anything to do with that. I think they would have wanted to preserve it. But unfortunately, unbeknownst to anyone, the archdiocese took it down. We didn't know it. You they no idea they it didn't have a down. building from it. It was just done. Mm. So that was unfortunate. And of course, Holmes bought it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Stores there and the mm -hmm. doctor's offices and so forth. Mm -hmm. But man's store was, 
tight uh, store, I guess, people would go with uh, whatever like supplies they like had. Like a yeah. store? Yeah, and they also had Sumners, which would be in back of where Frank Rose lived. There was a house there, Mr. Hardy lived in it. Uh, and that was Sumners store. And he oh. used to have a little restaurant there, too. Oh, oh I didn't yeah. know that. We didn't know that one. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there were stores. There was one up near Park Street and uh, mm -hmm. other places. But for the most part, people went to Franklin or whatever. And of course, in the days uh, long ago, uh, this was all farms, farms. Mm -hmm. And so people would uh, sell their chickens and eggs and so forth and take, ship them by train into Boston. And oh, that's oh. Why. And watercress, because Crestbrook Farm, that had, that's on Lake Street, uh, where Crystal Lake is, um, that's where they do the watercress. Oh, I didn't know that. And ship, that. Ship, mm -hmm. yeah, they were shipped into Boston. Mm -hmm. How long was that farm there? Uh, watercress Farm. Well, um, I, I can't say how long was there. It was quite the Curtises lived there for a while. Mrs. Curtis, she wrote books on roses. She grew roses. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I just don't know exactly how long that was in operation. Is that because there's still watercress there. Is that the farmhouse book. still there? Oh, or yes. Is that oh, farmhouse yes. Is oh, that oh. beautiful big white house that's there. That, um, on Lake Street? Yes. Yes. Maybe. The, um, McCormick? McCormick. McCormick was there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's a beautiful house. So they, yeah. they have their own watercress then. The oh, yes, right? <laughs> sure. Well, my husband nice. and his family and a lot of others used to swim in that water there. Oh. Mm -hmm. Crystal Lake. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure it isn't crystal like anymore, but yeah, they did. And skate on uh, City Mills That's Pond. Fine. I've been to City yeah. Mills Pond skating. Yeah. What about Man's Pond? Man's that? Pond was the pond that most everybody went to for swimming, and they gave lessons there. My Ingram's wife, Blair, used to give um, lessons. She was a uh, lifeguard, and uh, they used that pond. Is that the pond behind the old town hall? or That pond, or where well, is it? you know where, Ro uh, where Roach has his, um, um, his gas station and so forth. There's a little road beside of that led way back down into the one time Cribby had it. And uh, we would drive down near the, the near the prison. prison. Across from the that? prison. Yes. Across okay. from the prison. That was Man's Pond. It was owned by the man family. But we swam there. Okay. Now is that pond still there? Because you can't oh, yes. see it. From oh the road. yes. Oh yes. Yes. And uh, as a matter of fact, last year um, a few of us, some from Walpole and Historical Society. Barbara and I, we uh, rose to, we took pictures because we're hoping to put um, uh, a park, you know, Bertha Thales donated mm -hmm. uh, land, which was set aside for us and voted on to have and nothing got done for years. And finally, we discovered that we should <coughs> do something about it, uh, even though the uh, Corps of Engineers uh, took some of the land. We're going to probably have it dedicated this fall, mm -hmm. hopefully, and they're working oh, on wonderful. that. And uh, it will be just for uh, enjoying the uh, woods and the fields and nothing, no recreation of mm -hmm. any sort mm -hmm. would be there. Mm -hmm. And that was, see, at one time, Highland Lake also belonged to Walpole. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we were incorporated in 1970, Yes, 1870. <laughs> uh, we took, had to take land in order to make our 15 <coughs> square miles of, of, of Buffalo from Franklin and Medway and oh. uh, Walpole mm -hmm. and Redmond, of course. And uh, that part of that land was highly uh, white. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, We're learning a lot. We are learning a lot. This is fabulous. <laughs> When when we were interviewing some of the other women, they were talking about the social life growing up in, in Norfolk, and a lot of them said it was, some of them said it was surrounding the church, and some of them said it was surrounding the Grange. 
What would you say was, you know, for your social life? What well, kind, what social life, yes, I would say the church played, played an important part. And of course, uh, I was going to St. Jude's, um, and uh, we had Barney with a lot of card parties and things like that, and dances, and there was a bowling team, and so a lot of it was with the church. I did not belong to the Grange at the time, but the Grange was very active. There were many members. Mm -hmm. Now it's dwindled quite a bit. I still belong to the Grange. And of course, the uh, membership is very low. And we've had a lot of problems with being able to renovate mm -hmm. the old Grange, and uh, it's still a mess with all. There's a lot of problems there. And so that's what more or less it was. Um, I don't know. But I. I, uh, my first singing debut was in <laughs> fifth grade at the ball school. I sang, did your mother come from Ireland? And I won third prize. Can you sing uh, it for us right now? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. You don't want to yes, hear it. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to Yes, you do. <laughs> well, you goes, uh, I don't know. Did your mother come from Ireland? Cause there's something in you Irish, and I, I don't want to go on. That is <laughs> wonderful! Oh, that's beautiful! But, beautiful. But, but since then, of course, I've sung solo at both a Protestant and a Catholic Oh, my and, goodness! And sang in the choir. But uh, that, that uh, so I became involved with both <coughs> churches. Mm -hmm. I, I say I'm ecumenical because of <laughs> You can do it. Well, I've worked with the St. Jude's and I worked with uh, the Federal okay. Church. But you said, but you said you, you were first, you were Protestant. I was Protestant. Then, then you became, became a Catholic. Yes, Catholic. yes. Mm -hmm. So I still have that in me yes. to, you know. And I think if there was a synagogue, I probably would go there to learn. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's too bad there's not like a community yeah, I know. Uh, a I group know. that sings well, within the community. Know, many roads lead to Boston. <laughs> that, that's what they say. That is definitely what they say. But you can tell us, uh, also I know because you've told us in the past, uh, stories about the Centennial. Can you tell us a little bit about the Centennial? Well, we'll never have a time like that. Oh, I heard um, And I, I shall be doing a program on Oh, oh, good. Oh, and, uh, and of course, um, there will be on the 24th of this month, I believe it is, History on the Hill, the Barber's Giving. And we will talk about the centennial because it is 40 years in on February 23rd that we had, uh, well, I shouldn't, it's, it's been, uh, the 23rd is uh, our uh, anniversary, but it's been 40 years since we had our centennial, mm -hmm. and it started with the Brothers of the Brush. Yes. The men decided they were, weren't going to shave all year, and if they got caught shaving, they were fined. And of course, they went to the Legion Hall, which was located on Myrtle Street, <laughs> and then they paraded to the town hill, where they buried Ray Zor, R-A-Y-Z-O-R, Ray Zor. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Bellingham Brothers of the Brush were there and tried to steal it and so forth. And uh, But that's where it started. And then, of course, different organizations from the Brothers of the Brush, the Bells, were um, incorporated as a, as a charter. And uh, the head of the Bells was Jamie Daly, who Daly's, mm -hmm. Daly's uh, gas uh, station. And her but Herman was the head of the Brothers of the Brush. Mm -hmm. And we had a wonderful time. We did things that we'd be arrested today, I think, if they if the other <laughs> But the police chief was in on a lot. <laughs> got that protection of the police yeah, chief. Yeah, we did. We did. And we dressed, and, uh, you know, we had fashion shows, and we had beard feelers that we did a beard contest. And we had, um, oh. Rolling pin toss. Oh, no, that, no. That oh, that was wasn't that, that for the sent out? Oh, oh no, okay. no, we didn't have a draw. That was done long before oh, the show okay. the shows were filmed. Yeah, um, but we had uh, days that we had to pay penalties. And 
and so uh, they did some crazy stuff like egg rolling with your nose. <laughs> and at one point, I, uh, because we got caught, our, our uh, mascot was taken in order to retrieve it. We bells had to dress up our little baggy pants and uh, over shoes and hair and curlers and sucking on a pacifier and jumping <laughs> rope. Those are the things that we had to do. Oh my God. There so were a lot, of other, a lot of other things that happened. Yeah. That, uh, but uh, at the end of the year, Bud Allen, who um, was the chef, he had a chicken barbecue for oh about a thousand goodness. people and had, had it in St. Jules Park. Oh wow. my goodness! Yes. Yes. Thank goodness it didn't rain. Yes. Oh yes. my but, goodness! Uh, it was a, a great time. Oh, I can imagine. Time. And you had a wonderful parade because we have seen some of the old we pictures had the of the biggest parade. parade we ever had. Yes, mm -hmm. and Margaret Hecla, who was a representative at the time, she was there, and uh, we had a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of a lot of celebrities and a lot of fun. Uh, Walter Holmes uh, was our honorary mayor. Mm -hmm. We saw a picture where you actually had a live Well, lion the, lion, the lions, uh, that was the best clothing. And that, that was, they had a paper mache elephant that they built themselves. Mm -hmm. um, John Hardy was a clown. And uh, all of a sudden, I believe, was, uh, he drove the machine and, uh, yeah, we were underneath the elephant. And uh, um, Jim Davies was out front, I guess, as Sabu with the walk. Oh, <laughs> and uh, and he kind of directed him which way to go. Yeah, yeah, oh, and that was so beautiful. We won an award. The, the uh, bells float was done mostly in my backyard, and uh, I got the furniture from across the street. Mr. Richter, who was related to the Cundies, gave it to me. I asked him for it, and we put it on the float, and we won. And I happened to be working for a wholesale jeweler at the time, so I engraved it, but I don't know where it is now. Oh, okay. And uh, so we were very honored with that. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, the 125th, I had a white Jeep that belonged to my son-in-law. We decorated it in my garage, and I drove the thing through the rain, <laughs> through the rain, through the parade. We did fine, stopping and going. Got up to my front yard at the end, and it died. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, it lasted. Lasted, yeah, at least lasted great. for that parade. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. that is one. Those are wonderful stories. Yeah. And it must have been a wonderful feeling of community for you during that year. The yes. centennial, everybody was involved and everybody enjoyed themselves and Most it was just everybody, fun. Yeah. Most everybody, yeah. We did. We had a great time. And then people would be sneaking up on their uh, stomachs to, to uh, <laughs> peek in windows and things and <laughs> try to catch somebody doing something. And that was crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> So the, they had the young people's groups too. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. But they'll never be like that. No. Could, no. No. And of course, the population was not what it is today. No. So, right. And the building, as I say, didn't start till about 1980. And uh, then it just zoomed. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and it really did. Yeah. Even because that short period of time that I've been here, it's changed a great deal. Yes. Yes. So now, imagine. what do you feel, Thelma, is one of the biggest changes that you've seen in Norfolk since you moved here? Of course, the town center is about the biggest change, <laughs> yeah. with a huge library and up on a hill. With the, because when I worked as assistant town clerk, we had the old yes. uh, building. Right. And, uh, yeah, and it became quite crowded. <coughs> and the historical commission had to meet in the hall mm -hmm. because there was no mm -hmm. room. And, uh, of course, when I first started the uh, office of the tax collector and town clerk would be as you come in the back door straight ahead and then eventually became the building the department. But then we moved to where the lockup was. They had a police station then. Mm -hmm. That little added building on the side was the police station and lockup and that's oh. where we uh, finally went to. And I can remember the time. Uh, I can remember the time that uh, I got a call from the police station that it had been broken into, and so because we used to sell fishing licenses and so forth, mm -hmm. which they don't know, but it had been broken into, and I went down, and there were all the police cruisers, and I thought, oh my gosh, what has happened? And there's money all over the floor, oh my and I oh. 
gosh, I didn't know. But that devil of the police chief did it purposely. He put the money. It was broken into, but he put money on the floor just to, to see what kind of a reaction I would have. Oh, and, my goodness. It seems that a fellow wanted a fishing license, and he jimmied the back door. Oh, goodness. <laughs> and set off alarm. We, my uh, town clerk put an alarm because I told you about Mr. Black. Mm -hmm. Well, the first time I met him, he was like like an electric cat, ready to pounce. He came into the office as a town clerk, and he threatened us. And he used to threaten us all through, telling us that he'll, we had a horrible vacation and everything like that. So she put in the alarm. So that's why mm -hmm. uh, when the door was broken into, the uh, alarm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Thelma was, it, I can remember the first time I met you was when I was sworn in to work on the polls, I think, was the oh. very first time. Oh, I so was, yeah, I know you did that. I you were always warden. involved I, in I the was polls. A warden. Uh, I'm no longer, I gave that up. But that was a, a very, uh, yeah. you were very, everybody well, knew. Well, one time I had to run the whole, when we had the paper uh -huh. uh, ballots, and the town clerk was ill or something, and it was either the presidential or the primary, and I had to run it myself. And I can remember, 1 o'clock, you had to call up the middle of the country and report oh away. <laughs> well, and it, and we'd, we'd, be, we'd be working late, you know, there, because you had to you had have a Democrat and a Republican opposite one another, and you had to count all these. Yeah, it was a big job. Until Alice came along and decided, you know, Alice Bosch and decided we needed something. Thank you. Is that when the electric that, That's when you have yeah. the counting yeah. Yeah. Machine. yeah, machines. Yeah. That makes a big difference, and oh. you have to count all those by hand. Yeah. And yeah. A lot. And, and did you, um, of course, there weren't as many people, you know, when they were doing it by paper, and, and no, it's still, they, it's still well, a lot. Uh, they weren't, no. And there been a lot of changes with the uh, way things were run. Um, I can remember when I would make muffins for the breakfast. Now they served a breakfast. Now we <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a lot of, a lot of changes. Yeah. Um, it, it's, I, I wanted to ask you to tell us again the story about the, the priests when they first came into St. Jude. You were telling us a funny story about um, uh, Fitzgerald. Oh, Father Fitzgerald, oh. who was cousin to... He was the cousin, first cousin to uh, John F. Kennedy. Kennedy. Yes, he was uh, our curate, and of course I met him when I was getting a uh, spiritual bouquet. I went to the house, which was the old uh, man's, you know, the old uh, <laughs> rector. And uh, he came to the door, and he had a white turtle sweater on, and I asked him if he was a curate, yep. And I told him what I wanted. So we came into the back room where Father Flint had his desk that was covered with, oh, I don't know how he ever found anything, but anyway, he's trying to search for, for a spiritual bouquet and he couldn't find it. So he went upstairs and he came down, he almost fell down the whole flight of stairs. He came to the desk, he opened the desk drawer and everything went all over the place and I'm thinking, oh boy. <laughs> and I did. And there were other th times when he really made you wonder, <laughs> but he was cute and he was nice and he was helpful. And, yeah. What about the time that, about the lighting? Of the oh, the, oh well, my brother <laughs> Stanley and his wife came to visit and we went to before mass and she was lighting a lot of can candle and the thing flared up and <laughs> Father show was there with all his robes and he saw it and he flew over the banister with the robes <laughs> flying <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> we were so shocked. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, one of the uh, great stories, too, is that I know that you cook on a wood stove. Oh, yeah. And we know that you are a very good baker of cakes and oh. obviously muffins because well, you just I, told us about the muffins. I, when I, the first, when the children were growing up, because I didn't work, but I got a job at the bubbling brook. My mother was on the grill and at the Bumbling Brook, and I think uh, if she wasn't there, we would have been fired for the time that I was serving freeze in the cold, mm -hmm. and, the, and the boat fell out, and all the freezes were oh. all over the world. <laughs> and Franny, Fr Franny uh, Stone, who was the mother of our police chief, and I were working there, 
and the little boss were on her hands and knees trying to pry the thing and I'm laughing. <laughs> Mrs. Ingraham was <laughs> the boss. She didn't like it at all because I, you know, I laugh at everything. <laughs> it's not so funny. But anyway, uh, this Norfolk uh, Junior High was being built and Julie Candela was the, the brother of um, Pauline. He was the head, uh, he was the manager of the uh, cafeteria, and he wanted help him, help us to come into the cafeteria. So Francis and I went, and that was when the, the uh, cafeteria wasn't completely built, so we had to go to the junior, uh, to go to the high school and pack bag lunches and serve them in the hallway till that uh, cafeteria was built. So I worked with her baking. Then when I, was asked to come to the Freeman School, Freeman Centennial School, by Clara White, who was head of the cafeteria. She needed a baker, and she asked me if I would do it. So I came here. When Mr. Freeman uh, retired uh, from the school committee after 33 years, I think it was, I made his cake and decorated, and he got all sorts of awards. And I got a letter from his daughter stating Priscilla that. Priscilla Chick, who we also we interviewed. Have you interviewed. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, that wasn't. Oh, it wasn't that uh, one? It, oh. I should say it was his granddaughter. Oh, okay. Actually, right. the brother. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she, and I still have a note, saying that he forgot all his awards, but he was determined to take home the cake. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, oh, that's I also cute. made the cake for Father Flynn after yeah. his 40 years in the police force. Wow. That's, that's amazing. So I used to decorate cakes. And did you do one for Miss Day when she retired? Do you remember? No. No. I didn't know. But um, I, she was quite ill, and I visited her in the hospital at Pond. We had, we had uh, Pond and stuff with them, mm -hmm. and that's what she was. And uh, she was uh, master of our Grange. Um, and she spent mm -hmm. many, many years in the Grange. And that's when I joined. I I think I've been in the Grange for only 15 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Now, did you do all that baking on, on that wood burning stove? Oh, no. <laughs> I became the cook and baker for the coffee shop. We had Bet's Coffee Shop, which is now makes pizza. There was a oh. coffee shop there. Mm -hmm. And I used to do that. Cooking yeah. for that, too? Mm -hmm. Oh, my mm -hmm. goodness. Are you still baking cakes? And not as much. No. <laughs> I don't do as much. I still cook and bake, but I don't mm -hmm. do as much. You know. Well, I don't know how you have time with everything else that you do. No, you I are so I active with the historical right. commission and, and all the activities that you're involved. Well, it's getting to be wearing. No. <laughs> you, you moved here, and it appears that you just immersed yourself into this community. Oh, no, not really. Not really. I. You know, I had children to bring up, and so I didn't. I didn't work. The only thing I did for the water department was to. My sister-in-law happened to be working with the water department. Jean, she became the secretary to the police. Um, and uh, I know we had. I had to do some filing. I did some filing. That's the first thing I think I ever did for, for the time of. later that I, you became involved in more of that? Yeah, yeah, and then I got on various <coughs> committees. I was on um, the Celebrate Norfolk, and I had uh, a lot of committees like that. Do you have any, now that you know, so very active with the Historical Commission, do you have any goals or anything, a dream that you would really like to see uh, concerning the Norfolk you know, Historical Commission as to a project that you'd like to See completed or something oh, that started <laughs> that you can't, well, you know. Uh, not me myself, mm -hmm. but no, the all, commission all the itself. Commission. We have a lot of projects. There's so many. Right now, uh, we are going to, uh, I guess, have something to do with the Veterans Church, uh, the parish, to uh, put up uh, the uh, sign that stated that you know it was the original parish. The parsonage. The parsonage. The parsonage. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there. Are, of course, we would like to see the Highland Lake 
project. Mm -hmm. specifically say any any one that's more important than the other. No, no. no. Uh, we have a wonderful commission yeah. and yeah. really yeah. and every one of them is so great. They really uh, are interested. And we have Betsy Whitney who was over the Pondville section who was doing a lot of work in uh, the history of Pondville. And but she's oh she's so excited about it. We had a sign that was given to us and it was put uh, I believe railroad station and a pond, board, an old board. Hmm. Well, <laughs> she went in to take a picture of it and I don't know how she ever could think it was pond because she could hardly <laughs> read it. But she was so excited about it and it made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but we have that. Oh, that you have that picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Now there was a station right, um, where the train is in the center of town, there right, was, right by the there, there was. It was wallpapered with uh, different kinds of wallpaper, and there used to be um, a little uh, notice out front, you know, about the meetings at Norfolk, you know, and people that would be going to Norfolk, Connecticut, would take it because you know it was interesting. <laughs> and uh, we went the time in 1970. It was used, I think, by by uh, the trappers of one of, one of the organizations, you know, mm. to me. Yeah, it was a really cute little station. And then, mm. of course, we used to have another one over in the city mills area. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, was that was that uh, on the Frank Gross side, the one in the town? Was that on the yeah, inside before, of the house? Or was it before on the before you got to the, the railroad, you know, the railroad mm. and then the station and then the Springs. Because I always think there's not much space there, and I was trying to picture no, where that, that was, would always be. It was small. It was right. tiny. Yeah. But there was a lot of change. And of course, at that time, where the station is, they used to have a crossing guard because they didn't have lights or anything there. So this man would stand up with a sign to say stop or go or whatever. Oh. Stop. And, yeah. And uh, that's when they first started. And then, of course, there was another uh, station. Um, I don't. I guess there was a house there, yeah, down at Highland Lake, down where uh, Keenan's Crossing is. Mm -hmm. down the area, so. um, and they all had little um, train masters or whatever they to, had, who yeah. had to go out and yeah. put, use mm -hmm. that sign yeah. when they knew a train was coming. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's too bad that little station in the center of mm -hmm. town isn't still there. So I, I know people want. I know a few people that would like to have had it as a as a bakery. Oh, oh, that would have been wonderful. Yeah. 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 But there, you couldn't put up uh, any kind of uh, uh, sewerage or anything. Mm -hmm. you, know, you couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Are there any other changes in Norfolk that you would like to see done? My I wish changes. we could go back to what it was. <laughs> I remember interviewing Dorothy Campbell. She was a dispatcher. Her, it was her father who was the police chief and so forth. And when I interviewed her, and she said that she missed all the open space, she missed mm -hmm. the fields, and so mm -hmm. and, and people used to help a lot. You know, they would help each other when they needed uh, things done. And of course, it isn't too much like that because there's so many people, and many people don't know their neighbors here mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. It has changed that much. So, as far as what I'd like to say. Like to see it go back. I, I think a, a, little bit, bit, a lot of the women bit. would say the same thing yeah, that we interviewed. We, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's sleep. Uh, what I, my land abuts the old sweet property. And uh, I can't believe what has happened there. Mm -hmm. I just can't. Because I know the old sweet and his family very well. And uh, I don't think they would have appreciated it. But uh, as they say, it's progress, mm -hmm. and there's more people coming into town. At one time, the town clerk, when we used to get a call and ask about Norfolk, they want to move here. <laughs> Mrs. Pearson would say, "Tell them there's a prison here; they shouldn't <laughs> come." <laughs> but it didn't stop. Me. It didn't stop people. You know, as stop. long as you have that train there for a commuter, that's you know, is a drawing, I'm sure, for many people. Yeah. To move into, but I remember when I first saw that 
like I did to the Sweet Lawn Farms with the building, I was driving down the road and all of a sudden it just like it opened up. It was incredible. Yeah. People say they they kind of get lost. They don't realize where they are. Mm -hmm. So it's a big change. But probably eventually the trees will grow and mm -hmm. things will look a lot different. Mm -hmm. right. that, we used to even skate in that little pond way back there. That was man made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Down on the property. And of course my children would go to the farm, the barns, and the cows. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Mrs. Sweet, she'd be bent over. And she would go across that street, lickety split, and milk cows faster than the machine could milk. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's that amazing. was quite a woman. Wow. I remember the stand in front of the house. My you know, brother in law built it. Grain. My brother in law all built the stand, and yes, mm -hmm. they used to sell the vegetables, and Eddie Sweet sold his uh, paintings. Mm -hmm. there. He was an artist. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Well, you know, they used to coast, as I, I in the book, uh, America, the stories in that book, and there's a picture in the back showing them, showing them coasting down City Mills Hill. And from what my sister-in-law has told me, they would coast from where Country Crossing is now all the way down past the police station. Of course, when I grew up, there were hardly any cars, if we saw a car, mm -hmm. you know, and it was horse and buggy. And one thing, I probably shouldn't tell a story, but we used to sit in the stone walls and watch the cars go by and we wait for this man, Heine Miller, who had a, was a junk man, he had a horse, and when the horse did his duty, he'd jump out of that thing, he'd take a rag out and wipe the back of the horse, and that was like, wow! We would be, <laughs> We would be so, <laughs> but I mean, that, that were horse and buggies because mm -hmm. my parents, they come from Canada and that's how, they didn't have electricity and they didn't have uh, automobiles, so uh, that was my experience on the farm, you know, you had to uh, light the uh, uh, light lamps at night and mm -hmm. cut off the wicks and fill them with oil and uh, it was, go to the market, hitch up the horse and you know, wow. yeah, yeah. So I grew up to, to know what that was all about. But the children today didn't have that. Mm -hmm. In a way, I feel bad because that was that was a great thing about growing up when you were young. You could go with anybody's property. There weren't any posted signs. We go, and I when I lived in uh, Norwood, I'd go to the Bird Estate, and we would ski down. Mm -hmm. as well slide down and their property and we go in the woods and gather nuts and do things like that. And, you know, the kids can't do that too. Mm -hmm. you know. We've heard a lot of wonderful stories about that same vein, about the feeling of being out and doing whatever and people are always watching all the, everybody's children and you had a real sense of community I think mm -hmm. and that, the, the, no wonder you would like that time to come back. We had uh, neighbors closer than what the neighbors are here. And uh, when we wanted a baseball game, we just went to the house and say, Ellie, can you come out and play? And we'd gather up enough people to play uh, baseball. There were no uniforms or anything mm -hmm. like that. Then, you know, we mm -hmm. just did those things. I learned to skate and swim in uh, the flats, in the little ponds with the fish. And uh, until they built this cement pond. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it was uh, fun growing up mm -hmm. in my time. Mm -hmm. I only wish the children today could enjoy as much as I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they don't, what they don't know, they right. can't miss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Definitely. But you have some wonderful memories. And I, we're just I, so thankful. I live that long you, enough. Oh, <laughs> We're just so thankful that we <laughs> were able to get these down on tape and also, you know, into a book because they're wonderful stories that should be passed on to the younger kids. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that, you know, the children at the elementary do something with the Norfolk history. And if they're yes, nice I, to do I that. have given history to the children here. And as a matter of fact, next month, I'm, I've been asked next month to give history to the Girl Scouts of Norfolk. Oh, so I've done programs like mm -hmm. that. So, um, just to keep 
uh, in line, just to keep the history mm -hmm. alive. Mm -hmm. People could ask questions, and then I learn a lot too. Oh, I imagine. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just not myself mm -hmm. giving. I learn from other people, and there's always new stories mm -hmm. coming up, and, mm -hmm. and amazes me at some of the things. Mm -hmm. Oh, I say I didn't know that. Oh, you didn't know that. So <laughs> I mean, yeah. it just there's just so much to know. Yeah. Of course, yeah. this this place would anybody believe the kids love to hear that there were Indians here. Yes. You know, That's how amazing, woods he it? was and everything, <coughs> who was here, and, and um, still and all, we still find artifacts, mm -hmm. yeah. and there is a dig going on right now. Oh, oh really? Oh. Where is the dig well, going on? Um, I don't know what I should say. <laughs> That's <laughs> all right. That's probably on. a good yeah. idea, yeah. 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 But that's wonderful that a dig is going yeah. on. Have they yeah. found anything? Or oh, yes. Oh, how exciting. That is exciting. Will they have them that probably display? You probably know about it eventually. Will yeah. they, the, the, you think, eventually display the findings? I don't know. This? It's uh, an archaeological team mm. that's doing How mm. well, so. interesting. That's something to look forward to. Yeah. Then, huh? I hope. And more mysteries to solve for you as you see these pieces of yeah. things. And well, we have a lot of mysteries. You know, they talk about the rocks over toward the Medfield line that probably were Viking, Vikings there and they have inscribed to the oh, Yeah, the Runa. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Hmm. There's a lot of history around here mm -hmm. and you wouldn't believe it. Really. Mm -hmm. you, you figure, oh, Melfort doesn't have that much, but it does. It does. It does. Yeah, George Washington coming back, maybe. Say. Yeah, well, I think I think John Oliveri is trying to dispute that. He's yeah. gone to the Congress <laughs> a library to see if you know they could come up with anything on. As far as we know, it's true, and that his men were there were pitch pines on top of the town hill, and the men slept under there. Uh, because there were Tories who were the people that were in favor of the English that were on the road and they had to escape them. So uh, oh. we believe it. That you really believe it. That's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. That is a lot of history and that goes back a long time ago. Which it, yep. it is nice to, to have that. And, seven, the, yep. and the children must really get excited about that when they hear those stories. I think so. And the fact that we had all these stage coaches. Mm -hmm. And Needham, the Needham family, the Needham Street's named after, they had stagecoaches. And then we have what we call Granny's Run, which is over um, where the housing is on Fawn Street, um, on a road. And uh, that Granny's Run is a big slab of stone. And we believe that it was called that because Granville had a team and a Stagecoach, and he used to go over toward Foxborough. That we mm -hmm. believe maybe that rock was named after Granville. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. on Arnold Road. Mm -hmm. Near yes, they have, yeah, it is. It's on the left hand side. You get up in the road and you go over the left hand side of the woods, and there's that long, long, long flat. Mm -hmm. And the Girl Scouts did a book on it. Oh, yeah, that's and Granny's Run, the Girl Scouts book on it. Oh, that's, mm -hmm. that's very interesting. Well, we have learned an awful lot, Alma, from, from all your wonderful stories. Well, and we are so <laughs> thankful, so thankful well, that you came and yes. shared that, yes. all these things with us. Um, and, it, and it just opens up our eyes to what a special place Norfolk is. And we're very fortunate to be able to get these recorded. And we thank you well, so yeah. very much for coming and agreeing to do this You're with welcome. us. We really appreciate it.